In this video I show you how I created this dragon here from start to finish in Blender 2.79. This video is more for advanced users and it's a mixture of time-lapse and tutorial. So on the one hand you will learn my workflow and on the other hand you will learn many cool tips and tricks along the way. If you just want to watch certain parts check the chapter marks in the video description below. So enjoy! Hi everyone, Zach here. Thanks for checking out my channel. Here you learn the best tips and tricks to boost your Blender skills and to create beautiful 3D art. Yeah, a few weeks ago I was contacted by Danny. He's running this YouTube channel 3D Printed Tabletop. So he is a 3D printing guy and he wanted to start this kickstart campaign where he wanted to like offer 3D models of dragons for the bakers which they can download and 3D print at home. So and he asked me if I can create this special forest dragon which will be an exclusive offer for all the bakers of this kickstart campaign. Yeah and I felt this was a nice idea so I created this dragon and then he started his kickstart campaign which is called the Lost Dragons 3D printable fantasy dragons and his initial fundraising goal was $4,000 and this this campaign was funded in just two hours and all in all he collected $86,000 in this kickstart campaign which is pretty impressive. And although the campaign is already over you still can get the late pledges as far as I understand so you still can get all these dragons. Just head over to the kickstart campaign page link in the video description below. Yeah and certainly I recorded the whole process of this dragon but this took me around about 30 hours hours and I don't just want it to put like this 30 hours somehow into a time lapse. This would be kind of boring and probably much too fast. So I decided to go another route by creating a full dedicated video where I show you the whole process. So this is a mixture of tutorials and time lapses so that you can enjoy the full benefit of this. Yeah, this dragon was fully created in Blender 2.79. So this tutorial is also based on Blender 2.79. These nice renderings you just saw I created in Eevee in Blender 2.8, the alpha version. It's not a stale version out for Blender 2.8 yet. And at the end of the video I also show you a short setup on how I created this green material for this dragon in Blender 2.8 but the rest of the video is Blender 2.7. So very special this video you're watching right now and the 3D model of the dragon will be added to my mastering sculpting workshop in the next couple of days. So if you got the mastering sculpting course already then you got this as free update and for all the people that didn't have it already today November 23rd is Black Friday so you can get my mastering sculpting course 30% off until the end of Monday 26th. If you want to grab this deal check out the link in the video description and certainly if you're watching this video later you still can get this mastering sculpting workshop but yeah without the discount. Sorry! Yeah and by the way if you sculpt a lot you probably also enjoy my free Blender sculpting sheet sheet with all the important shortcuts for Blender sculpt mode. Link in the video description below. Okay before we get started one final warning here I'm using a quite powerful computer. The specs you can find down below in the video description and in order to sculpt these very high resolution sculptings you need a powerful computer in order to have fun while sculpting. So keep this in mind and also in order to get good at sculpting you need a lot of practice and you need to put a lot of time into this. And very soon we start with Sculpt January 2019. This is an event where you can practice sculpting over 31 days and you can win some pretty nice prizes. If you want to learn more about this check the link in the video description. Alright without further blah blah let's get started. So the very first thing I needed to do was to put together some references because actually for this dragon I didn't have any concept. So basically I had to create this 3D dragon while thinking about how this should look like. And what helped me a lot was just putting together some references and for this I used the tool Pure Ref, which is super awesome, it's free and you just can drag and drop images into this infinitive canvas and order them, group them and stuff like this to have all your references in place. So even with high resolution this is really nice. So I just grabbed a bunch of references 
I think this references I got from Danny, just to get the idea what he wants. And then I grabbed some other references from tree creatures and stuff like this. I think this down here also served quite a lot as reference. And then some 3D stuff for some ideas and inspiration for scales and stuff like this. And this stuff up here, some 3D printed images, because actually this was my first sculpting designed for 3D printing. And yeah, I just grabbed a bunch of images to check how 3D prints are usually made in terms of thickness of parts and details and stuff like this. So super handy tool and what I really like about this, if you just open up your browser and Google for some images, you just can drag and drop in into pure ref and also with some shortcuts rotate them or scale them, really handy. Link to this tool in the video description. So after I got my references in place, I started to build my base mesh. And since I didn't had any concept, I just started modeling and over the time it evolved into um, the pose which I wanted to create, which I had in mind. The dragon should sit on this broken tree. This was my concept and idea for this uh, project. So I had to somehow turn it into a 3D shape. And in the base mesh creation phase, I try to keep it as simple as possible in order to keep this flexible so I can easily move parts and shapes around to try out different poses, to try out different shapes. Um, I added uh, the major parts like big horns uh, to the body already to really get an idea on what I want here. Yeah, and this really helped me to basically create a concept in 3D already, which I can use to sculpt on later on. Yeah, and as you can see with this very simple shapes, it's easy to adjust the pose. So I can add the legs, I can add the wings and the arms, and it's really easy to move stuff around without spending hours on creating something here. So, and yeah, this served as foundation later on to sculpt on actually. All right, now let's take a look on what techniques I used to create the base mesh, because here I used several different techniques to create all the different parts. So let's start with the tree here. This was just super basic mesh modeling, like loop cuts, extrusion, stuff like this. The branches are just sticked into the tree just to give me an idea where I want to put the branches and how the dragon should sit on this tree here. Then the body of the dragon was created with a curve. If I switch to edit mode, you can see we have this line here, which is the curve basically. And if you want to add a mesh around a curve, you can do it over here in the object data tab. First of all, under shape, you have to set the fill type to full and then go to geometry, increase the depths and the resolution. And then you have something which looks like a cable. And if you select a vertex here, you can simply press Alt S to scale single vertices, which is pretty nice. So you can define the thickness of the body in different areas. Later on, if you want to sculpt on the curve, you have to convert this into a mesh by pressing Alt C and select mesh from curve meta surf text. If I click on this, you can see this was converted into a mesh. Then the head was simply created with also mesh modeling and a subsurf modifier on it. Also, if you want to use the subdivisions later on for sculpting, you have to apply this. And the next technique I used was the skin modifier modeling. Let's call it this way. Here I used three different modifiers. Let's turn them off. And you can see all I did was simply create some edges here. So this is no curve or anything. This is a simple edge. So create a cube, delete everything except one vertex and then extrude this. And then you can create simple edges. Also, I used a mirror modifier to mirror this, but this I already applied in this file here. Then I added a subsurf modifier to smooth out the edges to have a more curvy look. Then I added a skin modifier, which generates a mesh around the edges. And also similar to the curves, if you select a vertex with control A, you can scale the single vertices. And then you can easily extrude stuff if you like. And with control A scale this to change the shape here. And then I added another subsurf modifier to add a higher resolution, which is always nice 
if you want to go over to sculpt mode later on. And if you want to move over to sculpt mode, you have to apply all the modifiers in order to make this work. Same thing I did for the wings, as you can see, if I turn off the skin modifier, and the other modifiers you can see, this are just a few edges put it together. Super simple in terms of adjusting the shape. And also the same thing I did for the legs, the arms and the toes. But don't forget to apply all the modifiers before you switch over to sculpt mode. And over here, this is actually a simple plane. So just a simple plane shape, some loop cuts added, and then I added the solidify modifier to add thickness and the subsurf modifier to smooth out the area. So, and now after you've created your shapes and wanted to start sculpting, you, as mentioned before, have to apply all the modifiers. And in order to connect different pieces to each other, you have to use a Boolean operation. And if you're using Blender 2.79, I recommend go to File, User Preferences, Add-ons and search for Bool Tool and enable this. Save the user settings if you want to keep this add-on active. And then you can select more objects, press T and under tool you find the Bool Tools add-on and under Auto Boolean you simply click on Union. And then you can see both objects were really cut into each other. And if I now switch to Sculpt Mode, enable Dynamic Topology, Constant details, let's increase the detail size here a bit. And now let's use a clay strips brush. And if I draw on this, maybe let's increase this even more. You can see I can really connect these pieces. So, and certainly you also have to do this with all the other parts. So now we are switching over to sculpting and I started with the tree. But before I can actually sculpt on the tree, I have to do one thing. First of all, I can isolate the tree by pressing slash on the numpad. Or if you don't have a numpad, go down here to view, view global local. If you click on that, you will be in the local view and only see the selected objects. If you click on view, view global local again, or press numpad slash, then you're back. So if we switch to edit mode, you can see that the branches are not really connected with the trunk here. And this is really important in order to use this for sculpting. And that's why we have to Boolean these objects together as shown before. But in order to do this, all the branches has to be separate objects. And the easiest way to do this is by pressing P in edit mode and click on by loose parts. That means if I now switch back to object mode, all the parts in edit mode which are not connected will be separated as individual objects. And now I can select them all, select the trunk as last object, click on union. And now everything is really unified as one big object as you can see. And this is perfect to start the sculpting process. In order to start the sculpting process, what I usually do is go to sculpt mode. Certainly the object need to be selected. I enable dynamic topology, switch the detail type method to constant detail and check the mesh resolution. It's relatively low, so let's increase this. Most of the time I double or triple the resolution to start. Let's try 30. And I mainly start with the clay strips brush. And now I can start sculpting here and with shift I use the smooth brush to smooth out the areas. So yeah, this shouldn't be a full sculpting tutorial, but this is my setup, which I used to start sculpting. And now let's check out the time-lapse. So for the tree, the first thing I did, I was smoothing out the transition between the branches and the trunk. And then I started to add the major shapes. So at this stage, no little bark texture sculpting or anything like this. I just wanted to get an idea of the general shape of the tree. With a snake hook brush, I also pulled out some more roots and branches. And in general, I gave the tree a more twisted look, which to me felt a little bit more like this very old tree. And uh, after I was done with some major shapes, I turned on the dragon again and adjusted the tree and also the dragon a bit to fit to the shape of the tree. Yeah, the next step was the head because the head is 
I would say the major part of the dragon, the first thing you look at, which needs to look cool. And since I didn't have any idea at this point on how I wanted to sculpt all the details on the dragon, I just used the head as an yeah, object to experiment on. So the stuff I'm sculpting here, for example, I removed later on and started again. And this I did several times actually. I also added uh, some eyes um, as reference where I wanna place the eyes later on. And this really important, add them as separate objects so you can sculpt all the details around the eye without deforming the actual eye, which is really important. So as you can see here, I've changed the horns because I felt I wanted to create this that looks a little bit more like a forest dragon. So one idea I had was why not uh, changing the horns a bit more so that it looks like a stack, uh, which I think was a very good idea. So the teeth I also added using the skin modifier technique, which I showed you at the beginning. Combined with the mirror modifier, it was relatively easy to place them on both sides. For the head, in this moment, I added quite a lot of details, which is relatively unusual for this phase uh, of the sculpting process, because at the start, you want to keep the whole thing relatively low in resolution to just define the major shapes. But here, I just wanted to try out what I want to have in terms of details for the rest of the body. So all these tiny details I add here, basically I remove them later on again uh, to add different kind of shapes. And this I did several times during the creation process. There was a lot of trial and error involved and research on what I want to do. So then I switched over to the main horns here. I added some details also to get an idea how the horns should look like in terms of yeah, details and structure, uh, which turned out pretty nice, I think. So after I was relatively happy with the result of the head, which I will change later on, by the way, I went over to the body and later on the limbs to sculpt the major shapes to get a better feel of the overall shapes and weight of the dragon. So at this stage, I kept the resolution relatively low and just yeah, wanted to deform these very simple looking shapes at the moment. I also tried to apply some of the shapes I created on the head onto the body. But later on, I realized that this isn't really the way to go. Here, first of all, I added some shapes to the body. Later on, also, I created the limbs. I used some um, human references to get some of the muzzle structures right, uh, just to make the feel of it look natural. By the way, in order to get symmetry right on a non-symmetrical sculpting, I have a separate video which you can watch where I show you some different techniques on how to achieve this. Also, I try to keep the different parts of the limbs separate as long as needed, because if you merge everything at the beginning and the limbs are very close to the body, it's really hard to sculpt in between the body and the limbs. So try to keep them separate, sculpt all the major shapes, maybe also some details. And then later on, if you have the main shapes in place, then you can join all these parts together using the Boolean operation, which I showed you a bit earlier. While sculpting the dragon, firstly, I started with the legs and I started this as one whole object and I realized later on that I need to pose this. So posing for sculpt mode, the easiest way you can do it is by cutting things into pieces like here on the arm, just to have everything separate intersecting each other and then you can pose this and then later on if you have the perfect pose then you can merge everything with the boolean operation. So but I had the whole leg here already so what I did I was cutting this into pieces again. There are several ways to do it. Here I show you one quick way how you can do it. First I press slash on the numpad to isolate the leg. Maybe rotate this a bit if you like. Then I use the bool tools again which I showed you earlier and I use the draw poly brush tool to draw a simple shape, then press enter to create the shape. And now we have this kind of boxy shape here. I apply the modifier and I add a simple solidify modifier. 
Let's press Z for the wireframe mode and now you can see the solidify modifier adds thickness. So I just add a little bit of thickness here, also apply this and then I select the shape then with shift the leg and then I use the auto boolean tool with difference. Then this shape will be cut off from the leg and now you can see we have these two lines here. So now this is still one big object and in order to separate them switch to edit mode, press P to separate these parts and click by loose parts. Then everything which is not connected to each other will be separated as one object. Now we still have the problem that the origin of our object is still up here, but we need it to be like here to have a certain pivot point to rotate these objects better for posing. So and a quick way to do it is simply go to edit mode, select everything, move this around and you can see the origin stays where it is. And if I switch back to object mode, we have the new position. So same thing over here put it here and same thing over here. Since for sculpting it doesn't have to be like perfect in terms of the position since we will use sculpting later on anyway to merge all these shapes it doesn't really matter if you move this around freely. So now I can easily parent these parts, select this one then this, control P, set parent. That means this part is attached to this one here if I move this around and then this to this Control P, set parent to object. And now I can easily pose the leg a little bit. So let's go back to the dragon and now I can easily pose this. Then you can also parent the toes to the foot here and then it's relatively easy to pose this quickly. And then we can go over to sculpt mode and start sculpting here, smoothing the shape here, adding a little bit of blob over here so that the parts are intersecting with each other more. And let's imagine now we are done with sculpting the major shapes and maybe also some details on the different parts. The pose is perfect and then simply select both of them and unify them with the bool tool add-on. And then back in sculpt mode we can smooth this area here sculpt on this and then we have a nice leg with a new pose again. At this stage I had many different objects but everything was colored in the same gray color so it was relatively hard for me to see what's separated and what not. So I simply applied some different materials to the objects to better see the difference. Luckily in Blender 2.8 which is the next big release we have a very nice feature which we can enable for the viewport so that every object has automatically a different color. So yeah cool feature is coming up in the next release of Blender. So yeah actually at this moment I tried to keep the details similar to the head but overall it felt it's a little bit too messy to me. So somehow I wanted to find a more clear way to create the details. Also I wanted to have more like a larger details on the back and then more like a skin or smaller details on the belly and lower body of the dragon. So actually quite some of the time of the creation process I tried to find the kind of details I wanted to use and actually I tried several different styles on a small part of the dragon. We moved them and tried again and again and yeah here's a small compilation of all the different things I tried. <laughs>
What you might think now is impressive, but what a waste of time. Well, not really. I tested a lot of different techniques I haven't tested before. And actually I found different techniques I will use for the final sculpting of the details, which I show you a little bit later. But for now I decided to go on with the major shapes because I want to layer the details on top of the major shapes. So I started to add a little bit more fat, wrinkles and all this stuff to get a better idea overall of the dragon. I also added some more details to the toes. I decided to remove some of the details of the head. Then in the next step I wanted to sculpt the transition between the upper legs and the upper arms because there I also wanted to sculpt some wrinkles and so on and this I just can do when everything is merged together. Same thing I did with the lower part of the wings. Then I also merged the hands and the feet with the lower legs, but still separated from the rest of the body. And then step by step, I merged all these different parts together, sculpted the transitions. And then at the end, I basically had the oval shape in place so that I only needed to add all the details. So since I changed the pose of the wings over the time, the base mesh I've created didn't fit anymore. So I had to recreate the skin between the finger kind of things of the wings. So and for this, I created a very simple plane similar as shown before and added a solidify and a subsurf modifier to add thickness and to smoothen the surface. So here's a simple tip on how to place a new skin between those fingers here. As you can see, this should intersect a bit with the arms here or the fingers. So later on, it will be easy to merge these things together. And if I duplicate this edge here, this can take quite some time to place everything where it belongs to. And here's a simple trick down here. Let's enable snapping a snap element. Let's use volume and a snap target let's use median. That means if I now move something around, it will be always in the center of two surfaces which are lying behind each other. So if I duplicate this stuff, you can see it's always in the center of the arm here. So now let's extrude this with E, place this stuff over here. With control R, let's add some loop cuts place them in here, move this around a bit. Don't forget to, to turn snapping off if you want to make some other changes which should not be placed inside here. And then as you can see, really quick, you can add this skin between the wings. Yeah, and this is what I did for the whole wings. As you can see, I added quite a bunch of loop cuts later on or the fine details I sculpt a little bit later with a brush texture. So this is a dragon I had at this stage. Basically everything is merged except all the horns, the skin and the toes. There I just wanted to add some further details later on. So this parts I just merged at the end of the sculpting process. And right now I wanted to go over to create all the nice scales and details on the surface. But if you are using dynamic topology and go very high with the resolution, it becomes really, really slow. And a nice workaround is either to just subdivide the whole mesh with a relatively high subdivisions, apply the modifier and then start sculpting. This works. Or if you're using the multi res modifier and in order to use the multi res modifier so that it works perfectly, you need to create a quad based mesh so that the whole mesh is created out of quads, not triangles as we have now. So there are a few add-ons which can do this. For this, I used the paid add-on from the Blender Market Dune Remesh. There's also another paid add-on, the Tessellator and the free external tool called Instant Meshes, which are all more or less doing the same thing. All the links to the add-ons and tools you find in the video description below. So right here, I just want to show you this with this Dune Remesh. So I click on Remesh. And this is not creating a perfect mesh at all, but if we are zooming in, it creates a mesh which consists out of quads, faces with four vertices, which we now can use for the multi modifier. So let's go back to object mode. 
you can see the new mesh is just placed above the old one. So what we have to do right now, we have to go to the object tab down here on the display, disable wire and disable X-ray because with X-ray it will be placed above all other objects. So we always see it in front. So what we have to do right now, we have to go to the modifiers, add a multi-resolution modifier. Then let's hide the other one. And now we can subdivide this by clicking the subdivide button. And now you can see more subdivisions will be added to the dragon. So you can go as high as your computer can handle. But keep in mind, this will subdivide every face on the object. So if you subdivide this too high, your pulley count will explode. Anyway, now we can go into sculpt mode and start sculpting relatively smooth without turning dynamic topology on. And we have a relatively high detail size here. And now I can add all the nice details I want. And I always can turn off the multi res modifier to turn down the resolution if I want to have a smooth running viewport. And if you have the multi res modifier on, you can go to the options over here in sculpt mode and enable fast navigate. So every time you rotate around your object, it will change to a lower resolution, which makes the process also much faster. So yeah, this is pretty nice to add all these tiny details later on. And if you want to learn a little bit more about this technique and other tools which you can use, check out my other video where I show you how to create high resolution sculptings in Blender. So after I had my auto retopo and my multi res modifier on the mesh, I started to create the large scales on the upper side of the body. And for this, I mainly used masks, which I then extrude. Yeah, now let's check out how this works. So I have to say this time was the first time on a sculpting that I used masks intensively. And there are different ways to draw a mask, but in general, the mask system in Blender is relatively limited. So here are the tools that I used mostly. First of all, we have the mask brush, shortcut is M. Here we can define the strengths. I would put this to one. Then basically I draw the mask. If you want to have sharper edges, you can go to curve, use this one here, for example. And then as you can see, you can have this very sharp edges, but we have to fill in this manually. If you want to invert the mask, simply hold down control. Then you can erase areas like here, for example. And you can set the mask to smooth. Maybe use a smoother curve as well. And then as you can see, you can smooth out areas, which is unfortunately not that fast as you can see. So this is one method. And then we have a few more options down here. We have, for example, the box mask. You can clear all masks with Alt M. And what I used a lot is the lasso mask with shift control left click. So that means no matter what brush you have selected, if you now hit control shift, and draw with left click, you can basically draw the shape of the scale you wanna pull out. And this was the major tool I was using for creating the scales, but this tool has one big problem. No matter what you do, it always draws through the whole body, as you can see. And there's at this point no option to turn this off. So you have to take care that you don't draw anything like for example here, which could intersect with the masks you already have drawn. So definitely take care about this. And there's one hidden option if you open up the operator panel down here. And let's say I wanna erase a part. So this here, you have to draw the mask first and then down here you have to switch to value inverted. Then you can see it will be subtracted from the other masks. And now this mode is on as long as I set this to value again. But as you can see, always the last mask will be inverted. So that's also a little bit weird. Would be nice to have like a third button you can press to invert the lasso mask. But yeah, this is basically how I drawn all the masks. So, and if you have this very sharp edges, certainly I would use the mask brush, reduce the strengths, set this to smooth, and then smooth out this a bit. So after you've drawn all the masks for the different scales, you hit control I to invert the mask. Now you can see the whole body is isolated 
accept the areas here. And now let's switch over to the clay strips brush. Then we have this plane offset. This is basically a value that if I draw above this here, you can see it will be lifted up. And this easy, you can pull this stuff out. Then either smooth this with the smooth brush or use the flatten brush to flatten the areas a bit. Then I used the crease brush, the inverted crease brush. So I hold down control, draw over these edges here to lift this up a bit on one side. And with the flatten brush, I flatten this a bit on the other side. With Alt M, you also can disable the mask to smooth out the transitions between the body and the scales. And then the last thing I did, I used a very pointy curve, something like this with a relatively high strength. I enabled pressure sensitivity for the radius for my drawing tablet. And then I draw in these lines here so that this looks a little bit like wood. Overall, this was a very time consuming process because this is just pure manual work. So now let's enjoy a short time lapse on how I painted all the masks and created all the scales on the body. So as a next step, I went over to adding all the details. The first thing I did, I was adding some big winkles to the skin of the wings. 
For this I mainly used a very strong crease brush and the clay strips brush from time to time just to have the larger shapes in place. So and then I went over to add all the details like the skin details for the wings and later on also the smaller scales on the body. And for this I used some brush textures that means these black and white textures also called alphas. There are a bunch of free resources to download such textures. I purchased a pack with 50 dragon textures I used here. I link my resources down below in the video description. I also increased the resolution for the horns, uh, added some more details and also with a uh, brush texture I added some more of these kind of cracks to make this look even more high detailed. So then I wanted to add the small scales but I just wanted to add them on the lower body part. So what I did is I mask out the complete area where I have created all the large scales. So I created a new mask. After this I smoothed out the transition between the mask a bit. Just to have a nicer transition between the small and the large scales. Yeah, And then I grabbed a brush texture and started to add all these nice little scales to the lower body. And this was really fun to do because it was so fast compared to create all the large scales. Then I also used a bark texture for creating the bark on the tree. Which was a little bit detailed for my taste so I smoothed out the whole thing afterwards a bit. And with the grease brush I also added some more details. And then also I used a brush texture and added some more details to the ground. This stones and rocks and also this kind of roots so that the tree looks a little bit more connected with the ground. So now let's take a look how to use such brush textures in Blender. First of all I select the dragon then switch over to sculpt mode. Then usually I select the sculpt draw brush, open textures, create new, then switch over to the textures, open then navigate to the folder where you have your brush textures and double click on this. Then for the settings I would suggest to set the brush mapping to area plane. Then it will be extruded basically along the normals of each face and not from our view so we don't have any stretching in there. And I think the best way to use it is to go to stroke and set the stroke method to anchored. So that means we can click and hold and draw the brush basically. Certainly what you have to adjust is the strength up here so that it works for you. So and here's a little trick. If the brush texture has too much bright areas it can be that you get this bump. So not only the details but also this lifted up area which looks not so nice if you have all these bumps here all over the place. So what you can do go to texture and down here you have the sample bias and with this you can basically define the height. So if I set this to a negative value we are going more and more inwards. So let's set this to negative 0.5 and then we have with this brush pretty perfect result and if I increase this even more you can see we have this bump to the inside basically. So this keep in mind and then when you draw your brush strokes make sure that each of them is intersecting a bit with the one next to it. Okay after I was done with sculpting all the details this was basically what I had and you can see on the different colors these are still parts which are separated. So and this dragon was created for 3D printing and at this stage all the different objects are intersecting each other and this is not really useful for 3D printing as far as I know. I'm not an expert when it comes to 3D printing so everything on the 3D printing side was managed by Danny. So what I did was to boolean all the objects I still had together. So that means for the main body here, this thing, I applied the multi-res modifier with the highest resolution and then using the bool tool I basically selected two objects one after another and then I used the auto boolean union to unify everything. First of all I unified the toes and also sculpted on the transitions a bit. But in general, especially if you have very complex shapes and intersecting parts and if your model is not that large, 
It can happen that you have a lot of problems with Boolean operations. For example, if you unify two things, then you got problems like something suddenly disappears and will not be joined and stuff like this. So there are a couple of ways how to solve this. So first of all, you have to make sure that all your normals are correct, then that the scale is applied. And if all this doesn't work, then there's a trick which helped me a lot in many cases. So if I did everything to clean up the mesh and so on, but still the Boolean doesn't work, the one thing that helped me is to scale up the whole model. So what I did here for the dragon, I selected everything. Then with Shift C, I recenter the 3D cursor to the center of my scene. Then down here, I click on pivot point and set this to 3D cursor. That means my pivot point is always on the position of the 3D cursor here. That means if I transform, rotate, scale, you can see that it will use this position here. And then I was basically just scaling this up S by 100. Then certainly all the modifiers need to be applied. So for example, this stand down here and had some modifiers on it. Then with control A, you apply the scale so that Blender knows that this is the new standard scale of all these objects. Then you Boolean everything together. And after this, you scale this down by scale 0 0.01. And then you're back at the original scale. And then with control A, you apply the scale again. And then everything should work. If you have other sculpting problems, check out my other video, which is fully dedicated to solving these problems, link in the video description. So this was my more or less finished dragon with everything boolean together. That means this is now one big object and the volume is also one. So nothing is intersecting anymore. Everything is really cut into each other. So Danny told me for 3D printing, it's not so nice to have this big overhanging parts like the wings here and also the head could be a bit difficult. So what he told me is that I should cut the head here somewhere and also the wings here and here. So let me show you how I did this. I created this weird looking thing. If I disable the subsurf modifier, you can see this are just weirdly deformed shapes, which are basically covering the wings and the head fully in its volume. And one specific thing I did, if I disable the dragon for a second, you can see that inside the cutting area, basically I have this little extrusion, which later on is really important so that you can, after 3D printing, stick the dragon together and with some glue, this will even be more fixed so that this works. Same thing over here for the head. And this things I cut off using, for example, the intersect mode. And then I had the head and the wings separate. But make sure to duplicate the dragon first because otherwise you will lose the dragon's body because then you have to do it again with the difference option so that you have the body without the wings and the head. So, and this was the final thing I had. So if I, for example, select the wing here, you can see if I pull it out, this is how it looks like. Same thing for the head. You can see we have this holes in here right now, also on the head here and for the wings. So then I sent this to Danny so that he can check this out if it worked for 3D printing. And the only thing he mentioned is that the resolution is still too high because here I still have several millions of polygons. So I added a DCMate modifier, which used the resolution quite a lot. So just turn down the ratio until you have the resolution you want. And the same thing I did for the wings and the head. And after this, I selected one part, go to file, export and exported this as STL. And down here, I choose selection only. And then I exported each part individual in one file each. So we don't have this large file and it seems that this was better for 3D printing. Yeah, and for all the people who just wanna create an epic presentation of your sculpting, check out my previous video where I show you how to create this nice autofocus effect in Blender 2.8 EV. So this is a really nice way to present your sculptings. Link in the video description. Yeah, and for all the people that are interested in the material I created here, as you can see, this is really simple. So the first thing I did, I wanted to intensify all the details here. And for this, I usually would use a pointiness feature, but this is only working in cycles. So what I did, I selected the dragon, went over to vertex paint mode, 
basically a way to just color all the vertices of the mesh. And since we have a high dense mesh, we have a lot of vertices to color. So what I did, let's switch over to the solid viewport shading, enable overlays, because otherwise we don't see the vertex paint. And then I go to paint and click on dirt vertex color. And then we have this um, kind of ambient occlusion effect, which is painted all over the place. And this is really stored inside the vertex data. And then we can go back to object mode. Then let's go back to the rendered view. And if we take a look in the object data panel, we have the vertex colors and you can see this new color I created, this kind of ambient occlusion effect is called col. And all you need to do right now in the material is to add an input attribute and then type in call. Or if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can also add it under input vertex color and just click on here. Then you have basically the same thing. So, and as you can see this over here, I used to create this kind of shadow effect. So first thing I did, I put this attribute node with the vertex color information into a, a dark green and a light green color ramp to get this color, which is basically the main thing. Then since down here I had just a few polygons, you can see we have some not so nice looking effects and I didn't want to remesh the whole thing. So what I did, I was creating a simple gradient. With a mapping node, I changed the rotation and position so that I basically cover the lower part here. And then with a mix node, I mixed a dark green color over this so we don't see this ugly artifacts. And this was basically my final color. And the second thing I did, I was creating a very simple roughness map, also based on the vertex color. So I had this one here and then with a simple noise texture and a color ramp, I had this color here and then I mixed both together. Then I had something like this. And now I plugged this into the roughness value of the principal shader. And this basically means that all the dark areas will be a little bit more glossy and all the bright areas will be relatively rough. So there's less reflection. And with this simple effect, you have this nice glossy effects. Then it looks like we have some kind of vanishing above the surface. I don't know, but somehow this looks really cool. So, and as you can see, this is a super simple setup. And if you don't have this weird artifacts down here, you basically can fully ignore this stuff up here and just use this setup over here. Yeah, and the very cool thing here is that we can easily change the color with this color ramp here. So let's pick this handle, click down here, and then let's make a fire dragon. Yeah, something like this. Probably the simple setup in the world. <laughs> Yeah, guys, this was a pretty long video. Let me know in the comments below if you made it through the whole video and especially let me know what of all the tips you've maybe learned was the best thing for you. Yeah, guys, don't forget to grab the 30% off for my Mastering Sculpting course and don't forget to download my free Blender Sculpting Sheet Sheet. And by the way, this was probably my last video with Blender 2.79. I'm not entirely sure, but in the next couple of days slash weeks, Blender 2.8, the first beta version will be released. And I think this is a point where we slowly can start to make real video tutorials about Blender 2.8. So yeah, expect more Blender 2.8 stuff. And by the way, if you use Blender a lot, and especially if you use Blender professionally, there's a really cool way to support Blender's development. So if you wanna speed up things for Blender, if you wanna help to improve Blender, then check out fund.blender.org. There you find all further information. Yeah, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you love this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel, ring the bell. If you don't wanna miss any future content. That's it guys. See you in the next video. Goodbye.